Maintaining a plant attack with ADHD can be a pain, as I may forget to do my dailies and fertilize. The same can be said if I were to go on vacation. I need to find someone who is able to fertilize the tank at the right time. I heard a lot about auto-fertilization units and decided to get one. Except they're crazy expensive. Unless you go through sketchy alternatives. So, I decided to cheap out even further and make my own sketchy alternative. So here's the plan. The first thing I did was buy the necessary equipment. I needed a peristaltic pump, a button, a bunch of wires, this trident thing, an I2C LED screen, an RTC, and the the almighty Arduino Uno R3. These are all very cheap to get, especially if you get them from those shady alternatives. As always, we need to test these things to make sure that they actually work. And the only thing that's worth testing is the pump itself. Not because I forgot to film testing the other parts. <laughs> Oh look, the pump works. Setting the blue water aside, it's now time to put this beast together. Except I have no idea how to do this, as it's my very first Arduino project ever. So I decided to search my fridge, grab some bread, and put it on this board here. It then started to glow and evolve into a breadboard. Now we can use this to connect everything, which I was able to do by following this image that I found from this sketchy link. Now, we can't just put this right near the tank for obvious reasons. I needed a way to store it. So, the next thing that I did was buy a $400 3D printer. Yo, look how fast it's going! The great thing about this is that there's websites that are fully dedicated to 3D models for you to print. Except there wasn't one for the pump, which means that I have to somehow make my own. It's time to do another thing that I've never done before. 3D modeling. I actually got the hang of 3D modeling pretty easy. I started making a lot of progress and things are going pretty well. Oh uh, wait, never mind, it just crashed. I hate Windows so much. Which is why I installed Linux where I managed to complete the entire thing. And after printing it, I realized a flaw in that if the pump broke, it would leak right onto the Arduino. The next version also had an issue where it was easy to push the Arduino out of place. Eventually, I printed so many prototypes that I started having microplastics in certain areas. All that was worth it as I finally got the perfect design. I even modeled it in a way where you don't need any tools for assembly, no supports while printing, and even made the perfect lid and stand as well. And now, it's time to put it all together. Starting off with adding the LCD to the lid. Yo, why is it so hard to put it? You never saw that. Anyway, I also added a small hole for a manual dose button. Putting the rest together was a lot easier compared to the other parts. But there's one slight issue though. The hose connectors are a tad bit too small for the hose that I have. Fortunately, I found some spares that would work. Next is something I have done before. Programming. Except I suck at it. So I asked ChatGPT to do it for me. I made this. You made this? I made this. Now it's time to upload this to the Arduino and add power to it. Learn how to code, you complete idiot. What? So that's exactly what I did. I loaded up a Linus tech tip and I learned how to code. I then went back to ChatGPT and said that I can code now. It then gave me this beautiful monstrosity of code that's full of bugs. So I trashed it and wrote it myself. However, there's a few things I need to do. First, I need to make sure that the manual button actually works. So I got two contain- I got two containers and tested the button. Now, I can measure exactly how much the pump doses per second with the fertilizer I'll be dosing. The only way I can precisely measure is to use this syringe. It's kind of hard to tell the exact measurement, so I used another syringe to get the exact milliliter. Huh? Anyway, I found the pump was dosing on average 1.04 milliliters per second. This will be used to calculate the pump duration. Second, I need to make sure that the scheduling system works. It's a race against the clock as I have to make sure that I was able to catch the exact dose time. Whew, it works. And now, it's time to add this to the aquarium. Of course, I also designed and printed a bottle cap with a hole for the tubing and another for the tank. Except, you have to make this little loop here to prevent the tube from being squished. Priming the pump took forever though as the manual button doses the exact same amount as the scheduled doses. But it works great in the end. Except it's kind of boring in a way. So I printed this custom hanger that sits between the light and the glass. Wow. That sagging's worse than your mom. So I printed this custom hanger that sits between the light and the glass. Everything looks and works smoothly as expected. Even this tiny spider made its home in the loop. Nature 
is finally healing. Wait, what's that sound? Oh no, this is bad. Something malfunctioned and the pump did not stop. The entire fertilizer bottle got dumped right into the tank. To make matters worse, it's an EI-based fertilizer. I stopped filming and did multiple water changes until the water was crystal clear again. However, the damage was already done. The tank is full of staghorn algae, but the worst part was the amount of shrimp death that I got. There was more than 10 shrimp that I removed, and that's not accounting for the ones that I did not see. Fortunately, all my fish were fine, and I still have Adam and Eve here to repopulate the colony. So, what happened? The biggest culprit was the MOSFET. After I switched it out, everything worked again. Huh? It's me? I was the problem all along? Oh. Yeah. That's right, there's something I did not add to the hardware that would have saved this entire headache. It's this right here, and it's called a flyback diode. It's mainly for protecting this guy from overvoltage. And I should also add a check valve to the outflow as you can clearly see that there's some backflow and bubbles in the tubing. I have to also make sure that the check valve is not adding any resistance by using the syringe again. Every time, huh? Since adding these, I haven't had a single issue with it. If you do want to make one for yourself, I have uploaded the code onto the Troposcape GitHub, and all the parts are available through the Listium link below. Of course, you don't need a 3D printer for this, as you can just toss the parts into a box and pray it doesn't leak. Oh, and if you can make my code better, please do. As always, thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe and check out all my other videos. Leave a comment down below for any ideas that you have for any weird experiments, or in the Discord, please. It's really quiet in there.